think, Fran? It's okay at the moment. We've just turned, made a decision and turned onto the Kaim U, Kaim O, E, Kaim. Lots of people have said how weedy it is and they're not coming down here. But, you know, I still have a go. So it's pretty green. But at the moment, it just looks like a surface duckweed. So just on tick over and see what happens. You can, uh, I, think it's, I think it's navigable for how many miles, do we know? About six miles, six I miles think, or seven it? miles or so. And it used to go all the way into Sleaford, which is 13 miles away. Uh, but we're going to stop in the village of South Kyme. And uh, just shortly after that, there's a turning point. So we'll stay in South Kyme for a couple of nights and then turn around and come back out because uh, there's a very, very low bridge ahead and we're not even going to bother to try and get underneath it. <laughs> so uh, no, we're just going to turn around. <laughs> we're not going to, but it's very, very peaceful. But, you know, it's easy driving because I'm sure I'm not going to see another boat coming the other way. There's nobody about, um, but very green. Very flat. You can't see much above these banks. You can't see anything above these banks. So uh, we'll just uh, moor up and go and investigate, I think, on foot. Yeah, definitely. something we haven't done for a while, turning a bend. Everywhere on the river with them, <laughs> river with them, is uh, very straight and very monotonous to say the least. So this is different, this is quite pleasant, enjoying this and there's a lock up ahead very shortly. Been ages, hasn't oh my it? goodness, the one that we've got managing. Oh, a king kingfish just, just <laughs> swoops straight past us, yeah. Um, but yeah, especially a lock that we can just manage ourselves slowly rather than big river levels coming in and out. Archie's walking up and down the deck, he's making us bounce. He's a right heavy footed dog, so yeah, beautiful so far. We've just done a couple of miles down here, and it is wonderful, absolutely stunning. I mean, there's nobody about, so we're actually going to sit on this little lock landing yeah. and have a bit of lunch before we move forward. We've opened the lock gate just in case anybody comes up behind us. But, no, um, no, nobody's going to come no up No one's us. moving. So peaceful. Are you going to work the lock or shall I? It's a guillotine. What do you want to do? I don't care. I'll work it. 
<laughs> <laughs> so this sign says bottom lock. The plaque on the gate says Taylor's luck. But the book says lower kime luck. So what's it to be? <laughs> Found some food, friend. <laughs> Try it, yeah. I'll lower story. these down. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This side. Which one? Here. Right in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, look at them. There's two there. As you picked them first, I'll let you taste them. Oh, bugger. Dropped it. Oh wow. Oh my word. That looks pretty weedy. I think that's it, Fran. We'll just scrape through. That's fine. <laughs> 260 turns each way. 260. 520 turns of the wheel. You can do it on the way back. Okay. You can have a lie down now, old girl. That water's a little bit stagnant, it stinks. I would not want to fall in there. Well this is really slow going, the water level is so low here and there's so much weed we're just picking our way through. We've arrived now at the village of South Kyme where we're going to moor up for a couple of nights. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to navigate this bend. It's not been easy navigating the bends because uh, the prop's got so much weed around it I think. So we'll be getting our hands down there won't we Fran? Yes you will. Go on Rich, what's happening? I'm not a happy chappy now. Um, water levels are so low that we couldn't get under the bridge in South Kyme here. So um, not that bridge, although we did get grounded at that bridge. Couldn't get through the bridge ahead. Uh, we got grounded, um, so we couldn't get on the mooring pontoons because the water was so low. So now we're reversing two and a half miles back to the lock that we came through and uh, get back on the other side. To be honest, the gates that we came through were open, so the navigation is navigable apparently. I'm glad we're doing this in a sense because if we'd have gone another mile and a half to the winding hole, and not being able to turn, we'd have had to reverse another one and a half miles on top of the yeah. two and a half we're doing now. Steering this boat is often quite easy because we use the bow thrusters to get the direction right and then just go slowly backwards. But we don't use the bow thrusters unless we have to because we really don't want them blocked with weed. And as we're going back, when you're going forward, the bow of the boat breaks the weed before you hit it. But going back, the propeller is the first thing that's hitting the weed. So we've got weed, shallow ground, and two and three quarter miles to go. <laughs> and about half a mile an hour. Thing is, we, could, we couldn't try mooring up for the night, but I don't want the water levels to drop even further. No. I just want to get it done, get out of here and get back to safety. Yeah, and then we can deal with tomorrow, tomorrow, you know, no, sleep knowing that we can get out again. Um, and there's not even any water here, so we can't just sort of hopefully stay put. 
and if we're stuck we're stuck because there's no water facilities here so we can't stay more than a couple of days anyway so here we go <laughs> So we've got about half a mile to go, Fran. You're taking the helm. Yeah, but the other thing I've just realised is that that lock that I just took 520 turns, we've got to just do it again now. <laughs> I think we're more up this side of the lock, I think. <laughs> we've done okay, actually. Good teamwork. Rich with the pole, me with the tiller. The bow um, thrusters keep, keep uh, quitting on us because they're getting overheated so we have to let them cool down for 20 minutes before we can use them again so I'm at the front of the bow with the pole. Rich did say that he actually quite likes us going backwards lark and we might make ourselves a backwards travelling video channel. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe not. <laughs> Hurrah! There be the luck. What time is it Fran? That's taken two and a half hours to do just over two miles, two and a half miles maybe. Oh, and we're both pooped. <laughs> Took us two and a half hours at least to get back. Um, oh, what a journey that's been, isn't it? I was so disappointed because you were really looking forward to doing this and looking at the yeah. South Kyle looked lovely. This is the one stretch I've been looking forward to, to do since we came down on this river, but anyway. We Not tried. Speed, we tried. We tried. <laughs> but the bow thrusters kept packing in, uh, overheating, so I had to keep going into the deck at the front with the barge pole and just pushing the boat one way or the other to steer her. So I'm knackered now and I want my dinner. Yeah, well that's going to take an hour because it's not even started. And we're in the middle of nowhere and I can't even have a beer. There's no pub. We've got no <laughs> none in the fridge. <laughs> We've got lots of hot water for a shower though. Oh, that will do. Then, and you've got it? chips eventually no. for tea. <laughs> so what a day. What a day. So anyway, we're all okay. We're safe and sound. Hopefully we can turn here tomorrow and uh, get back in the lock. The shame of it is something else to do. it's not the weed that stopped us. Everybody says it's about coming down here because it's so weedy and it is. But fortunately, we haven't had to clear the weed hatch out. It's been okay. It was just shallow water at South Kyme. Just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Ho-hum. Anyway, let's get cracking. Dinner. And, uh, we live to fight another day. And we've day. still got chocolate cake left oh. as well. So it's not all bad. <laughs> so here we are at Kirkstead Bridge near Woodham Spa and uh, no room on the pontoon all fully booked so we've just reversed in on the end tied up the back and dropped the anchor at the front job done well a lovely mooring spot for the night but not so lovely what people have left behind bottles boxes plastic bottles so the kids of Woodall Spa you've done yourselves proud so we're going around picking it up. Oh, oh yeah, that'll be the inflatable porpoise that is now in there. So we'll be picking that up on our way past as well. That's a bit better, Fran. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but um, it looks better. And you would hope that if another gang of children or a family comes down, they're less likely to just to leave their litter behind, seeing it all pristine. One can live and hope. Don't Is hold your right? breath. <laughs> Dolphin rescue. The biggest fish I'm ever going to catch. Well done, hero. Oh, we're saving the planet one dolphin at a time. <laughs> Well, we're in the village of Southry, uh, Southry, 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 just east of uh, Lincoln. 
and uh, nothing of note really in the village except for this church here which was built in 1898 by the villagers and that is all I can tell you about it. We've had a massive cruise this morning literally across the canal. <laughs> river. Because, oh river because the moorings were on the other side the village is on this side yeah. Um, so yeah we just took us three minutes I think to get across and in the past they had to have a, a chain ferry didn't they to take yeah, the villages yeah. across to the pub which is one of the moorings where we are to this side but that is no longer so. no and also no longer is the train that used to run to King's Cross station from here but that stopped in 1970 more's the pity but uh, yeah hopefully the church is going to be open now so we'll go and have a look inside it says it's open it's on really the gate cute, at the front it's really it? cute yeah it's but really interesting we don't know anything about it yet so looks like it should be in New England America doesn't it, does. it? not uh, yeah. Lincolnshire yeah Anyway, let's go and have a look. Such a flat landscape, Fran. It's amazing. We've had such big skies, beautiful skies, clouds spotting to your heart's content. until really recently because look at the lintels across the door yeah. and modern bricks and yeah. that wall is plastered and rendered there's modern brick over there and there's a fireplace in there so it's a fab place and now it's just full of sheep isn't it <laughs> full of sheep you know what as well underfoot <sighs> oh Jess what are you doing down there in the shade lining all the sheep doodah fabulous really enjoyed that that's uh, amazing like to get up there. One of those walls is coming over, look. Fancy a piece of cake, Chuck. Oh, jolly ho. You ha do you have lashings of ginger beer? No, got water there. Apple cake from Windfall Apples, given by a lovely viewer. Yes, Ruth, who also gave us splendid cake. Oh. And, uh, and happy eggs. Happy eggs, yeah. Oh, dogs, you've got your own biscuits. Oh, well done. Where did that go? You've eaten that already? Mm hmm. Gun it. After Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries in 1536, this site was turned into a Tudor manor house and uh, Buildings were erected up against it up until the late 20th century when they were demolished in the 1980s. And apparently, Bardley, is it Bardley, Francis? Yes, I think so. Bardley Rock Festival. Bardley Pop, Pop Festival was held here in the 1970s, mate. Poptastic. Poptastic.
just come through Bardney Lock and we're filling up with water but I have never seen anything like this in my life before. Yes, that's the navigation, folks. Looks like you could walk on it. Where are we, friend? Well, we just shot past a mooring at Fiskerton Fen and then realised on the map that there's a brewery here. So we did a handbrake turn, if that's possible, in a boat. <laughs> and we came back to get a beer to sit on the boat with tonight. Look at that. All brewed on the site. And it's Ferry Ales, did you say? Ferry, Ferry? Ales Brewery at Fiskerton. And we're the only ones on the mooring spot. Just right here is a nature reserve, so we've got the binoculars and we're going to go for a little walk and uh, sit in the bird hide and see what we can see. You can see we're dressed appropriately in our camouflage gear, <laughs> so nobody can see us coming. <laughs> but hey ho, we are in a bird hide, it'll be fine. Um, and what did we see oh, the other day? Man, talking of nature. <laughs> we were. Well, as if you've been following us, you know we've been desperate to see otters and we heard a noise by the boat which we were sure was a bird. It was really high-pitched. Really high-pitched squeak, wasn't it? It, it was. Really loud. And then I saw a little face peeping out of the reeds. Just and like uh, three metres away from the boat. It yeah. was amazing, wasn't it? And we thought it was a water vole and then the whole body just leapt out of the water. But there were four of them. Yeah, a family of otters just swimming around the back of the boat, weren't they? And then they soon scooted up, up the river but I managed to catch a little bit of video and uh, so chuffed, so uh, so amazing, wasn't it? Was it was like you, emotions were just overwhelming. It's silly, really, but we've wanted to see otters for so long and see the four of them playing right by the boat. Yeah. So amazing. our job is done yeah, now. We, we've <laughs> I think we don't need to do any boating anymore. We've uh, done it all. We've still got to visit Lincoln, which we haven't been to yet. We're looking forward to that. And then we're off, aren't we? Yeah, off this this uh, navigation uh, by the weekend it's now Wednesday so hopefully by Saturday Sunday we'll be off yeah and on to ventures new but in the meantime we got some birds and that to look out for yes so let's get going come on then <laughs> 